All right, folks, Nerdy Pastor's back. i uh, been meaning to do uh, a review of this book for, for quite some time, uh, but just thought I was up at the office today. It's my day off. That's why I'm not in my, my, uh, my, my normal attire, just in the, the shirt and shorts today. Um, but thought I would do a quick review on a very, very important, very hard-hitting book that I think any person from really even high school up could really benefit from. And it is uh, the 2018 book, uh, Love Thy Body, uh, by Nancy Piercy. Um, this book is is just, it's outstanding. Uh, could not highly, I uh, could not recommend it highly enough for people to have on their shelves. I, if you're a pastor, um, I, I would buy 20 copies of this and give it out to your, your church leadership, um, elders and deacons and whoever else to help and lead um, the ministry of your of your church. Um, would really recommend you you hand those books out and also even doing a, a class a short reading group or something with with those leaders or with people that are interested in your church or to teach a Sunday school class on it. It's very easy to understand. It's a book that is very very much meant for popular level consumption, um, but but not but not treating the issues lightly, but but being serious about uh, the world views of the current the current cultural kind of milieu that's out there. I think. Um, it really is a, a perfect companion piece. It does not replace this book. It's, it's not, uh, there's just different goals in these different books that, that, that I'm recommending uh, this moment. Uh, but The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self by Truman. Th this is really the standard uh, book on how did we get here. Uh, a little bit more of an academic. I would not say a, a traditional academic book, but has more of an academic quality to it. But it's really how do we get from, you know, Rousseau, John Jacques Rousseau's Confessions to to this, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it starts in the Enlightenment, though we can obviously pull back much further than that. But, you know, from a historical kind of, you know, kind of linear that takes kind of some loops and kind of comes back around, how do we get from there to here? And Truman, at the very end of his book in the epilogue, recommends three books, of which two I'll just uh, very briefly share with you. But the book I'm reviewing is Love Thy Body by Nancy Piercy, of which he says, this is a great book to help with the applicational aspect of what do we do as a Christian in this, this, this current cultural climate that really is a clash between uh, modernity, you know, which is you know, kind of in some sense pre and, and you know, enlightenment and post enlightenment kind of, kind of ideology and worldview, kind of mixed with you know, the post modernity that we're, we're also engaging right now. And these are contradictory in many ways. Uh, that's why you'll see transgenders and, and, and feminists really go at it. These are different worldviews. Um, they agree on some things and they strongly disagree on other things. Um, so th this book by, by Piercy is very helpful as a companion piece um, as well uh, to, to the discussion and equipping yourself. Uh, I'll just give you three things that I really love about the book. First, she writes like a journalist. I mean, in many ways she is. Um, you know, really writes a lot like um, a journalist and someone who is... Just, just a great writer. She's just a great writer. She really speaks to um, just, I think, the sensibilities of, of someone who's concerned, but she also speaks to, the, to the, the emotion. She speaks to the practical needs of it, and she puts it in, in enough of a historical context. She puts the discussion in, in, into enough of an historical context that it's not just pathos and ethos. It, it's, there, there's really logic uh, in going into how she argues for things. It's really, really good. So I think she will speak to most people's sensibilities that, that have a Christian worldview, that are looking for the, the answer of what do I do uh, in this world? How do I live in this world? You know, what should I do? Should I just, you know, silo off? Should I just lament? Should I just get angry? You know, she, she says no to all that. Um, she shows you the way forward. I think it's just a really good book for that. Very practical, speaks to sensibilities, but gives you a real clear path forward without oversimplifying some of the things. The second thing I would say that, that the book is just really, really, really good on is that she does a good job of, I think, helping you see these issues in a real human lens. Um, th these issues that, we're, that we're, we're seeing here, abortion, euthanasia, homosexuality, transgenderism, the hookup culture, the sexual revolution, people are involved here. You, you know, it's easy as Christians just to talk about this like a bunch of ideas. But ideas have consequences, and these consequences are, are about people's lives. And I think she does a, a, just a fantastic job uh, through her different interviews with different people or different connections. She got permission from whole lots of people to share their stories um, of, of kind of where they've come from. And it's a very convicting, convincing book 
uh, because of that. And I think she does just an outstanding job of showing that, that Christians, yes, we should be convicted by the truth, but we must be compassionate and love for the lost and for those that are, that are you know, confused deeply by this world's um, you know, uh, disaster of, of an agenda and also the confusion of its, of its worldview. Um, and the third thing I think that just she does such a great job, and I wish she would hit it home just a little bit more if you're not a super discerning reader, might just kind of be flying through the book, but she says it in three or four places, just hits it on the head. But she says, as you can see, when someone says this, or they make this kind of decision, or they make this kind of choice, it actually is playing their hand to what their worldview is, because we are rational creatures created in God's image, Therefore, our thoughts and our ideas and our speech kind of, in many ways, unveil what we really think in a, in a holistic sense. And it might not be, you know, super symmetrical or really well put together, but it reveals what we really think in the whole because we're rational creatures that are trying to make sense of our world and our experience in a very holistic way. So she really argues from the sense of worldview, though that term is not a very ancient term. It really comes out of more of an existentialist background does not mean it's bad. It just means existentialist perspectives tend to focus on the human subject first and the human subject's experience of the world around them. And so the worldview is kind of the, the, the subject within the object of the world is more that perspective. So, you know, in some sense, they, they, there's some problems with that. But there's a lot of strengths to that, too, because we are subjects in a world. Um, but the challenge is, you know, what comes first, the object, you know, the reality of, of God or the, the subject, the one who's experiencing this reality of God. And, you know, even some, someone as great as Calvin would say that there's a challenge to know the ordering of that, though Calvin ultimately puts um, the Lord in an objective sense first, not the subject first. But she does a great job of saying, look, these ideas, these choices, these decisions have a connection to a worldview. And of course, the worldview she's talking about is not really one, but many. There are many worldviews that are in, in kind of a clashing reality, kind of different, you know, uh, you know, plates of the earth kind of crashing together in many ways. And so it's it's the the, the modern and the postmodern, right? It's the, the the world of Kant and Hume and and uh, Descartes and and Rousseau and others from the Enlightenment and the pre Enlightenment. Um, into Derrida and Foucault and others in the in the you know singer you know from Harvard and these other very postmodern kind of thinking individuals that really see they both see that the self the per the, the individual is sovereign right the self is sovereign huge issue for a Christian that's not true right we believe in the sovereign triune God right so there's a lot of problems with both of these views but they also disagree in a whole lot of ways. So we're in a in a uh, a mishmash, a milieu of of worldviews. So it's not a super easy answer. There's a lot to to think through and and to see how we can live in this world. Um, I really would not say there's any drawbacks, except for I would really have loved her to develop that worldview idea a little bit more richly to help people think. Oh, this is how I can witness in a cultural apologetic is, you know, when they say this or they say this, this connects back to this kind of thinking. And I think for Christians, we need to be pretty astute. With, with understanding worldviews and understanding how people are thinking and where that connects. Even if they don't, we need to. So that's what I would tell you. And then lastly, she does recommend um, this other book, um, or actually Truman recommends this other book. And this is, if you want something very hefty, very academic, uh, you know, more than Piercy, of course, um, Truman also recommends John Paul II's, which, you know, he's the former Pope. He was before Benedict, who was before... Uh, also Francis, so Francis and Benedict and Pope John Paul II. Uh, John Paul wrote a seminal work on the same kind of issue, a theology of the body. And he, it's called Man and Woman, He Created Them, a Theology of the Body by Pope John Paul II. Again, while we, we must disagree strongly with, with the theology of the Roman Catholics when it comes to grace, when it comes to authority, when it comes to the definition of the church, when it comes to soteriology and salvation, we don't disagree with them when it comes to the understanding of the human self and the, the body and the soul, um, we don't disagree. We strongly agree with them. That's why we lock arms so much with these social issues of euthanasia and abortion and homosexuality. That's why we are so much on the same page with those things. So uh, if you're reading just for those issues, that might be a great, more academic work for you. So really want to recommend Love Thy Body by Nancy Piercy to all of you. I really think it's a great companion piece to Truman's book, The Rise and 
Triumph of the Modern Self. I would not say it's a, it's a, it's a replacement for that book. They're really two different kinds of books, but they treat the same issues. One is really more of an historical quasi-academic book that helps you understand kind of the, the germination and how all these things have come about. It really helps your thinking. Whereas this book really helps, I think, more practically, how do I engage in this cultural milieu with a Christian apologetic and also understand the culture so I can, I can create a, uh, a bridge with people in the culture to help them to, to say, I understand what you're saying and I get what you're saying, but this is what Christ is saying. This is what his word says. So I think they both have a place and they, they are both, you know, complementary in a lot of ways. And I would recommend every Christian to have both of them. All right, signing off.